اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس كلوا مما في الارض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين انما يامركم بالسوء والفحشاء وان تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون فإذا قيل لهم اتبعوا ما أنزل الله قالوا بل نتبع ما ألفينا عليه آبانا أولو كان آباؤهم لا يعقلون شيئا ولا يهتدون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم واجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة آمين يا رب العالمين Before we start with this 21st section of Surah Al-Baqarah Please note two points As I told you that the four strands of the issues which are discussed in the second part One is regarding the Sharia, Ahkamu Sharia. Number two point, that just as we find in the end, in the last part of the first section, first half of the surah, there was mention of the pagan Arabs, the idolaters, the mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula. In the same way, in the second half also, we find in this ruku, a reference to them. And that is, just as I said that in the previous section, it's the last mention of the Ahlul Kitab, of the Jews and Christians in this Surah Al-Baqarah, in this way. In this section, this is the last reference to the pagan Arabs, to the idol-worshipping Arabs in this Surah. Ya ayuhal nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalun tayyibah. O people, O mankind, eat from whatever is in the earth which is halal, lawful, and tayyib, and good, and refined. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطَوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Verily, he is for you a clear enemy. Now two things. كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Whatever is halal, permissible, eat it. Don't refrain from eating anything which is declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as permissible and halal. Shaitan attacks human beings in two ways. He will persuade you to eat what is haram. And then he will give you different waswasa, different ideas about things which are halal. And he will ask you not to eat them, not to go near them. So actually keep both these things in your view. Kulu mimma filar di halal and tayyab. Oh, wheat, whatever is halal. And whatever is tayyab, whatever is good. In all the earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you with food. And don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. He is for you a clear enemy. Innama yamurukum bisu. He actually... For he actually ordains you, he commands you to whatever is evil, wal fasha, what is sinful, wa antakulu alallahi malat alamun. And he also commands you to say something about Allah, but you not know, without any knowledge. And it has another meaning also to ascribe to Allah something about which you have no knowledge. That Allah has declared this thing to be haram. Whereas we don't find anything in the Quran or in any revealed scripture that this is haram. This has been declared haram for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know, he will ascribe these things. Just as the people in the Arabian Peninsula, they have declared many things to be haram. The Jews had declared the meat of camel to be haram. Although there was no proof. Only Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam didn't like it personally. It was his liking or disliking. That's all personal liking or disliking. But they declared it to be haram. In the same way, there were animals in the Arabian Peninsula who were, who were given the names, you know, for certain gods. That this is 
reserved for that God and this is reserved for that God. And certain animals who had brought forth some offspring, some number of offsprings, after them now they are haram. You cannot take any service from them, you cannot eat their flesh, although those animals were halal in themselves. So all these things are covered by these ayat. إِنَّمَا يَامُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ وَانْتَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And you ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those things which you don't know. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ الطَّبِعُوا مَا عَذُرَ اللَّهِ And when it is said to them, follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, what He has revealed. قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُوا مَا عَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ عَبَانَا They say, instead we shall follow on what we found our forefathers. Whatever they were doing, whatever their practices, we shall follow them. Our laukana abahum la yaqiluna shaya. What? Will they follow their fathers, forefathers? Although it may be that their fathers were not knowing anything, but not understanding anything. Our laukana abahum la yaqiluna shaya. Wala yahtadun. And they were not the guided people. They were not of the guidance. وَمَسَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَمَسَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقُوا بِمَا لَا يَسْمَعُ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَلِدَاءً And the likeness of these people, these kuffar, who worship idols, and who call them their gods, their idols, for help, and pray to them, prostrate before them, their likeliness is to the people, to a shepherd who calls his flock of sheep, although this flock of sheep, they understand nothing. But only that someone is crying and someone is, is you know, calling, except that. So just like animals, these idols even don't understand, don't hear. But they are calling them and they are praying to them. Summun bukmun omyun faum la yaqilun. They are, they hear nothing, they are dumb, they are deaf, they are blind, so they do not understand. Ya ayuha ladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma radaknakum. Again, repeating. O oh, you who believe, in the beginning it was Ya Ayyuhan Nas, the address was to the whole of humanity, it was about in the generalized terms. Now it is particularly the Muslims are addressed here, Ya Ayyuhan Ladina Amanu, Kulu Min Tayyibati Ma Radaknakum, eat from the good things with which we have provided you. Vashkuru Lillah, and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, In Kuntubi Yahu Ta'abudun, if you really worship Him and obey Him, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ He has declared for you haram and he has forbade you from eating what? Four things. الْمَيْتَةَ The flesh of dead animals. وَالْدَّمَةَ And the blood. وَالْلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ And the flesh of swine. وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ and whatever was sacrificed in the name of anything else, anyone else except Allah. Then whosoever is forced by necessity, he has nothing else to eat, and he is dying of hunger, he can eat from these things even. Although these things have been declared to be haram, najis, in itself, in themselves. But a person who has nothing to eat, who cannot find anything more to eat, any other, other thing to eat, and he is going to die of hunger, he is allowed to eat from these also. There are two conditions. He, there must be no craving for it. You say that I am, I am eating pork because I have no other thing to eat here. No. You are not going to die without taking pork here. Then maybe that you have some craving within your heart for this, and you are only, you know, using it as a, uh, only a, a lame excuse and nothing else. There should be no craving for it, no liking for it, wala adin. And only that much amount can be taken which will save you from dying, not more. فَمَنِ اسْتُرَّ غَيْرَ بَعْدٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا اسْمَا عَدَيْهِ On such a person, if he takes some of these things which are forbidden, which are haram in themselves, there is no sin on him. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and He is merciful. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا عَذُرَ اللَّهُ بِنَ الْكِتَابِ Verily, those who hide and conceal what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down from the book, in the book. وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ سَلَنُمْ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا And they are purchasing, like accepting in exchange 
very low price ulai kama yaakuluna fi butunihim illan nar they are the people who are not eating into their stomachs and bellies except fire fire of hell although they might be eating very tasty foods but this is actually the fire of hell the cinders burning cinders of hell which they are putting in their stomachs and bellies wala yukallimuhum allah yawm al qiyamah allah will not speak to them on the day of judgment on the day of on the doom's day wala yuzakkihim and he will not purify them wala hum azabun alim and for them is a very painful torment ulaika alladhina ashtarabu dalalata bil huda they are the people who have purchased zalala error and going astray in exchange for hidayah hudan in exchange for guidance they have given up guidance accepted zalala wal azab bil maghfira they have exchanged azab for maghfira they could have maghfira for allah subhanahu wa taala forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa taala but they have given it up and they have chosen the punishment and the torment of allah subhanahu wa taala fama asbarahum ala nar how bold they are for the fire of hell zalika bi anna allah nazal al kitab bil haqq and this is because allah subhanahu wa taala sent down his book with haqq with whole truth the total truth wa inna alladhina ikhtalafu fil kitab la fi shiqaq ba'id and verily surely those who are making differences concerning this book who are differing concerning this book they are in a very far away enmity shiqaq ba'id they have gone far away in enmity and arrogance now comes a very big ayah of the quran and a very grand ayah it gives us a very comprehensive view of what is the virtue what's the concept of virtue and goodness in islam laysa birra an tawallu wujuhakum qibla al mashriq wal maghrib it's not all charity all good that you turn your faces towards the east and west the same subject you know there are two full sections of the quran of this surah al baqarah which discuss directly the issue of the changing of the direction of the qibla but two sections before we found the beginning lillahi mashriq wal maghrib fa'il ma tawallu fa samma wajhullah and two sections later we are again having the mention of the same issue don't think that this is all virtue and this is most important you have attached you know out of proportion importance to this issue laysa birran tawallu wujuhakum qabla al mashriq wal maghrib the real charity real good real virtue is not that you turn your faces towards the east or west walakin al birra but actually charity and virtue is the virtue of a person man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir wal malaikati wal kitab wal nabiyyi the first precondition of virtue and goodness and all good is to have faith in allah who has belief and faith in allah wal yawmil akhir and the last day wal malaikati and the angels wal kitab and the books wal nabiyyin and the prophets and number 2 what is the manifestation practical manifestation of this iman number 1 wa atal mala ala hubbihi zabil qurba wal yatama wal masakin wa ibn as-sabil wa as-sailin wa fi al-riqab they give away their own belongings their own wealth although they themselves love it in spite of their love for it this mal this wealth is is definitely dear to their hearts but despite this love for them for, for this property and and well they spend it and they spend it for who the will qurba close in relationship wal yatama and the orphans wal masakin and the poor wa ibn as-sabil and the wayfarer wa sailin and the beggars wa fil riqab and in releasing the people from the bondage of slavery and maybe also of debt wa ibn as-sabil wa sailin wa fil riqab wa aqam as-salah second practical manifestation and he established the regular prayer, prayers wa ata zakah and he prayed the charity the regular charity the compulsory charity and number 4 wal mufuna bi ahdihim idha ahadu 
and those who fulfill their words and promises and contracts when they have made any contract any promise and number 5 and least last but not the least rather we should say the most important was sabirin fil ba'sa wa dhara wa hin al ba's those who show perseverance and patience in distress and affliction and at the time of conflict and war and they are steadfast they are perseverance they show patience and they are ready to risk everything for the cause of allah subhanahu wa taala ulaika alladhina sadaqu wa ulaika humul muttaqun they are the people who are really truthful and they are the people who are really pious who are really god fearing now this is as you have seen this ayah the name of this ayah can be ayatul bir the ayah which gives us a comprehensive view of what is bir what is virtue what is what is you know charity and this gives us a full character picture of a person because you know the goodness or iman real faith it permeates the whole personality of a person the whole personality is changed if there is real iman in the heart walakin al birra man amana billahi wal yawm al akhir wal malaikati wal kitab wal nabiyyin that real iman in the heart will change and transform the whole character the whole personality of a man and that has been described in five terms number one that he gives away his wealth although it is dear to him for the needy the poor the orphans and so on number 2 establish prayer pays the regular zakat and he fulfills the promises that he makes the contracts whatever he has he has given word he sticks to them and number and finally then he is steadfast in the struggle between evil and good he fights the evil he challenges the evil and if there is time to have patience if there is persecution is there an opposition and he has he is afflicted with distress pain he has to get, go hungry he has has to to take risks about his own life wala nablu wanakum bi shay min al khawf wal ju' wa naqs min al amwal wal anfus wa al samarat which we read that, that ayah in the 19th section so that gives us a total picture of a man of a person of a character who is liked by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is actually a good person he is actually the one whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qatam alaykum al qisas oh you who believe now there is again you know some commandments about muamalat the affairs of the world about the cases in you know murder they because in every human society there can be killing slaying and murder يا ايها الذين امنوا قتب عليكم القصاص في القتلى او يو هو بيليف ذا لا اوف ايكويتابل ريتريبيوشن كونسيرنينغ ذا سلين ذا مردرد ون ذات هاز بين ميد ايسينشال فور يو قتب عليكم ات هاز بين ميد امبيراتيف اون يو يو هاف تو ابايد باي ذس لا اوف ايكويتابل ريتريبيوشن كونسيرنينغ ذا كيسز اوف سلينغ اند كيلينغ اند مردرينغ الحر بالحر a free man in the place of a free man he will have to die if he had committed the murder he will have to die or he will have to pay the blood money wal abd bil abd and if it is a slave then the slave will die not that because the slave jo hai he has he has killed a free man so he is not equal to his life no a man is equal to and every other man as regards the life wal unsa bil unsa and if the murderer is a woman then that woman will go faman ufiya lahu bi akhi shay'un so so ever is you know is uh, for whom so ever something is diminished from his brother now the brother of the slain of the murdered person of the killed person they are kith and kin if they are ready to pardon him it is as if they they have done some favor to him faman ufiya lahu bi akhi shay'un if they have accepted the blood money that is also a mercy to to him to the murderer to the killer fatibaun bil ma'ruf so then it should be given alleviation from your lord it should be in the proper way adaun ilahi bi ihsan 
and that blood money should be paid to them in a very beautiful way. Not grudgingly. Adaun ilayhi bi ihsan. Zalika taqfifun min rabbiku wa rahmah. And this is an alleviation, a decrease, a leniency from your Lord and a mercy. Whosoever transgresses even after that, he has accepted the blood money also, and he is after the taking the life of the killer also. He is whoever, whosoever does both the things, for him there is a very painful punishment. So this is the beauty of the Islamic law about these cases of murder, you know. If somebody is murdered, he has gone. Now, even if the killer is killed, the family of the murdered person gets nothing. But if, you know, this family pardons the killer, now this killer, you know, this murderer is under an ihsan of those people. And you know this will be good for both the parties. Otherwise, especially the tribal societies, Killings go on, revenge taken from one tribe, then the people of the other tribe kill so many people of that tribe, then again this tribe takes the revenge and kills so many people of that tribe, it goes on. You know, in dynasties it goes on, generation after generation it goes on. But this law, you know, it can produce a full stop, it can place a full stop on all these things, because now the duty of the state is to procure and hold the, and get that, that murderer, bring him to book. Now you place him at the mercy of the family of the peop, of the man who was murdered. That family has the authority, if they want to forgive him, they can forgive him. If they want to accept blood money, they can accept blood money. So that is actually the beauty and the wisdom of the divine law in the case of murder. And for you, O oh people of understanding, there is life in this law of equitable retribution concerning this name, so that you may save, you may be saved. It has been made obligatory upon you if death comes and comes, the time of dying comes of a person amongst you. If he is leaving behind him some wealth, that he should prepare and give a will, wasiya, lil validain, for the parents, walakrabeen, and the close in pith and kin, lil maruf, in a proper way, in a proper manner, in a reasonable, equitable manner. Haqqan al muttaqeen. It's a duty upon all people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, this ayah has been abrogated in total. Because when in Surah Al-Nisa, the law of inheritance was revealed in this detail. This is the portion of the father of the diseased, this is the, this is the portion of the mother of the diseased, and this is the portion of the daughters, and this is the portion of the, of the sons, and if there is none among the parents or the offsprings, then you know this, this wealth can go to the brothers and sisters and so on. When that law was revealed, this thing was abrogated. Now it is not necessary for any Muslim to prepare a will because all whatever he leaves behind him, it will be distributed according to the law of the Sharia, law of inheritance. But you know, if somebody wants to make a will, he can make up till one third of his property only. And none of the inheritors, the regular inheritors according to the Islamic law, he cannot be given anything in the will. That is the portion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed. They will get only the fixed portion. This will can be only for other people, some poor people, some institutions, some work of charity that can be given, you know, but up till the limit of one third of the total property, not all, not more than one third. So this is applicable only now to the one third of the property of a person who has died and rest of it will definitely be distributed according to the law, detailed law, which is revealed in Surah Al-Nisa. So this, it can also be said that this ayah has been abrogated totally because it is no more essential, obligatory for a Muslim to have a will. So, Kutiba alaykum iza hadara ahadakum ul mawtu in taraka khairan il wasiyyah, this commandment has been abrogated in total.
But a part of it has been retained by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from sunnah. That if somebody wants to give something to in a will, then he can do it up till one third of his property. But then whosoever changes it, after he has listened to it, فَإِنَّمَا إِسْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَهُ So the sin of it will be on those who change it. A person is dying and he has given a will, supposedly verbally only, but the people who were there, they have now changed. They say, no, no, he said not that thing, but he said this thing. So now the person who has died is not responsible. He will not to be blamed on the day of judgment. It will be those who have changed his will, they will be brought to the book and they will be blamed. In the Allah Sameeun Aleem, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to everything and he knows everything. فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوسِنْ جَنَفًا Whosoever fears that the diseased person, the, the person who has died and who has given a will, جَنَفًا أو إِسْمًا He has done some injustice in his will or he has done some wrongdoing. If there is the fear that he has committed a mistake, he shouldn't have done this. It is unjust. The distribution that he has given in his will is not based on justice. Then there must be a dispute. Those who have been given less, they will stand and demand more. But then if they agree ably, if they change it and they make, make, set it the matter right by mutual consultation, Fala Ismailat, then there is no sin on them. It is not sacrosanct that whatever the will is, it has to be implemented as such. No. If it is thought that it is unjust, injustice has been done, and then now by mutual agreement, some adjustments are made, so there is no harm in it, and there will be no sin in it. Ya Yuhaladin Amanu Kotebale Kumusyam. Now the other strength and that is of Ibadat. Now song. Ya you are Ladina Amanu Kotiba Alekum Siamu Kama Kotiba Ala Ladina min Kablekum la Alla Kumtakun. O you who profess to believe, keeping fast has been made mandatory for you, just as it was made mandatory for them who were before you. This was there in the Sharia of Moses alayhi salam also. Psalm was there in their Sharia. In the same way, now this psalm, Siam, keeping fast, has been made obligatory on you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you have real taqwa. So that you have self-control over your animal instincts. You have full control of your id and libido. أَيَّامَ مَعْدُودَاتِ As I told you, I think that this, this, these two ayat, they concern the first commandment that was given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the people after hijrah that every Muslim should keep three fasts every month because the Arabs were not accustomed to fasting so they were gradually accustomed to it in, in, in a manner that every month now you see the month could be December when fasting is easy the month could be July or August or May when the fasting is very difficult. So three days every month it becomes very easy. Different weathers, different seasons and only three days. But when it is full month it's not a simple case. It's definitely something very hard. So first order was for three days, 13th, 14th, 15th of every lunar month. That was the commandment. That is why the words are used, ayyama madudat. They are a few days. Thirty days are not few days. Thirty days are quite a big number. Ayyama madudat. Only a few days. Three days. Saman kana minkum marizan. And regarding these three days also, there are two concessions. Concession number one, whosoever may be from amongst you ill, sick, or ala safarin or on some travel. He can complete that number in other days. Three days, he can keep the fast in that month on any other three days. Number two, And on them who has the power to keep some, 
to keep fasting. They are not ill, they are not sick, they are not on traveling. And then they don't want to keep fast. Fidiyatun ta'abu miskeen. There is a redemption for them that they should feed one poor person. Thaman tatawwa khairan fawa khairullah. And whosoever voluntarily does more good, well, it is good for him. If he feeds two or three or ten or twenty, well, he will get the reward on the day of judgment. If someone keeps the fast also and also is feeding the hungry, well, he is doing it voluntarily. So there is no limit to the voluntary good deeds that a man can perform. Now this is the persuasion. Don't avail of this number two concession. There is the concession, but don't avail of it. If you fast, if you keep the fast, it is better for you. In kuntum talamun, if you have the real knowledge. If you know what is really good for you, what is really beneficial for you. For because fasting, you know, that is beneficial for your ruh, for your spirit. And you need it. While you know if you have only given some, some charity and you have fed a few hungry people, well, that ruh will not get the food that would have given to him if you had fasted. Now comes the final commandment about the Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan al ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Month of Ramadan is the month in which Qur'an was sent down. I had already discussed it in my preliminary lecture. Qur'an was sent down in two stages. Stage number one, from the Kitab al-Mahfuz, Lahim Mahfuz, Kitab al-Maknoon, Fi Ummil Kitab, to the first heaven, to the first sky. And that was done in total, at once, one piece, in one night, that night is Laylatul Qadr, and in one month, that was Ramadan. That is Inzal, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Quran, inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And second stage was that from there, the Archangel, Archangel Jibreel, alayhi salatu was salam, brought down Quran bit by bit, piece by piece, to the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this second stage took 22 years, beginning in the year 610 of Christian era and ending in the year 632 of the Christian era when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. So these are the two stages. Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, Hudal lil nasi wa bayyinati min al huda wal furqan. And what is this Quran? The guidance for whole of humanity. Now we can very easily compare. Here we find guidance for whole of humanity. And in the beginning of this surah was guidance for the muttaqeen. Hudal lil muttaqeen. How do you correlate this both? That in itself it is guidance. It keeps and it holds. It has the guidance for the whole of humanity. But you know, only those will be able to avail the guidance of Qur'an who have real taqwa in them, who are God-fearing, who want to save them, who have the real and living moral law within them. The sense, moral sense is there. They know what is bad, what is good. They want to be good. For them only, they can only avail the, from the guidance of this book. Khudal lillah se wabayyanati min al-huda. And this guidance is in very clear terms, bayyanat, self-evident. Wal furqan, and the criterion between good and bad, evil and good, between false and real. Faman shahida min kumus shahra fal yasum. Now whosoever of you witnesses this month, he has to keep fasting throughout the month. Fal yasum ho. This pronoun ho is going towards Shahra Ramadan. The whole month of Ramadan you have to keep fasting. Vamankana maridun or Allah suffering. Of the original two concessions, one has been retained, and that is why it has been repeated. Whosoever among you is ill or sick, or Allah suffering, or he is on some travel, fight that to bin Ukhar, he will complete the number. If the number was thirty days of Ramadan, you have to complete thirty days. If the number was that year, 29 days of Ramadan, you have to complete 29 days. That number of the month of Ramadan has to be completed. The second concession is now abrogated. That is no more. But here also we find, you know, from the wisdom of the Prophet 
that he has retained for a, a very extreme cases a man who is very sick, very sick, and he cannot keep fasting. There is fear that he may die. And other, a person is suffering from a disease from which there is no hope of recovery. And he cannot bear this hardship of fasting. For them, you know, the Prophet ﷺ has retained that option that in place of one fasting, one day of fasting, they can feed one poor person. But not generally, not the healthy people, not the people who can, who can go to fast. They don't, they cannot avail of this concession now. This is gone forever. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah intends for you easiness, ease, not difficulty. Don't be cruel to yourself. If you are suffering from fever, high fever, don't keep the fast. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the concession, He intends for you ease, not difficulty. But anyhow, you have to complete the figure, the, the number now. That is obligatory. That, that figure, that number is to be completed. And so that you glorify Allah. Rather the word should be magnify Allah. Takbir means to make something bigger and bigger. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. So now the saying Allahu Akbar, this is takbir. But actually only saying is not sufficient. To make Allah supreme, to make the deed of Allah supreme, so that He is obeyed in all aspects of life. It is actually takbir of the Rabb, that He is really accepted as great, as the biggest, as the greatest, as the authority, as the sovereign, sovereignty blessed with Him. So actually this is takbir. But this takbir, in you know, after the psalm, after the month of Ramadan, when there is Eid, then we have special tak takbir. In the Salah of Eid, there are additional takbir. This takbir saying Allahu Akbar is also takbir. And this takbir is on the, the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You should magnify Him, glorify Him on the guidance that He gave you. The blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came to you in the form of Quran. And so that you can really be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this has a very deep meaning. As I told you, man is composed of two constituent parts. The animal existence, the material existence, and the spiritual existence. Both are self-sufficient and independent, joined together. The tendencies of both are different, rather opposite, opposite to each other. One has come from this earth from the clay of the earth, from the crust of the earth. The other has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَسَلُونَ قَالِ الرُّوحُ قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنَ مِنَ رَبِّي Our animal being, the sources, this earth, and everything that we need for this animal being, for its feeding, for its requirements, all things come from there, from the earth. The food is coming from there. Everything which rejuvenates this body, this animal existence, coming from the earth. And now for this ruh, something that comes from him, from whom the ruh has come, that is the only thing that can give him it the strength, the real life, the vigor. This ruh needs, you know, feeding. And the food of this, this ruh and this spirit is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is in itself manifestation of the word of kul, kul fayakul. Every ruh of ours is a word of kul from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know its strength would be, it will be strengthened, it will be revived, it will be rejuvenated, it will be revitalized by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Quran. And that is what we are doing. Keeping the fast during the day and during the night we are awake with this Quran. Actually this is the two-pronged attack for this spiritual purification during the month of Ramadan. During the day, you are with fast. You are suppressing your animal existence. You are weakening it. At least some weakening is there. Although the weather may be very good, but then starvation, refraining from food and drinking, it, it has that effect. 
definite effect. And then in the night, keep awake, stand, listen to Allah's kalam, His words, let it be absorbed in the soils of your hearts and, and your minds. And that is actually, then you will know what a big blessing this Qur'an is. And then you will be able to give the thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportionately. And the next result is, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ When the ruh awakens, when the ruh is revitalized, it wants to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to its real source. كُلُّ شَيْنْ يَرْجِعُ إِلَىٰ أَصْلِهِ This is the saying of the Arabic language. Everything wants to return to its own source. The source of this ruh is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it is awakened and when it has been revitalized, it wants to be nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my bondsmen, ibadi, ask you about me, find me kareem. Tell them I am very near to them. I am not far off. I am very close to their hearts. I am nearer to them than their jugular veins. I am with them wherever they are. Huwa maakum ena maakuntum. He is with you wherever you are. I respond to the invocations. I respond to the prayers, supplications of my bondsmen. Where and when they call me, where and when they pray me, I listen to their prayers. I accept their prayers. I respond to their supplications and prayers. Now this is the other aspect as I told you today, that the relationship between Allah and His bondsman is two-sided. Faskuruni askurkum. Remember me, I will remember you. If you mention me in your heart, remember me in your heart, I will remember you in my heart. If you mention me in a gathering, I will mention you in a much higher and better gathering. Gathering of the Malaikatul Muqarrabun. I will mention my bondsman, my such and such bondsman, is mentioning me, he's remembering me, he's preaching my word, he's teaching my and conveying my message. So I will be mentioning him. In the same way here, if you want that I should listen to your prayers, if you want that I should accept your prayers, if you want that I should grant your requests, you should also listen to me. You should also hearken me, hearken to me. You should also respond to me. You should also accept my commands. So they should also listen to me, they should also respond to me, they should also have faith in me, so that they are led aright and they go straight to the final destination when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه There will be a mutual pleasure pleasure of both. Allah will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, the two-sided bilateral relationship. Allahu anhum wa radhu Now this ayah has another aspect of importance. And that is that this is the biggest magna carta of the rights of human beings that was given to humanity 1400 years ago. Otherwise, human beings were at the mercy of people who said to them, well, we are intermediaries between you and Allah and your God. You have to please us before you can place your, your applications and your prayers and your wishes and your requests to Allah, to your God. All the peers, all the pundits, all the pujaris, you know, this is P. Everywhere you will find this word, peer, pandit, pujari, parohat, pope. All you know it's from P. And these, they have been exploiting humanity. Actually, they have, this is the biggest exploitation. One exploitation was in the economic field, through the landlords, through the feudals, through the kings. They are extracting taxes from the people. People are working hard in the fields. But when it is harvested, the lion's share is taken by the landlord or the feudal, the lord. And the part, biggest part goes to the king. So these were the two exploitations, the political exploitation of man and the religious exploitation of man. You have to present here something, that is why 
in the in that you know temple of uh, Somnath, you would be amount of wealth, gold that was gathered over there. Where from did it come? From people who had you know some applications, some wishes. They wanted to pray to their gods, and they had to please you know the custodians of that temple first. So that was actually, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has freed us. پیران کلیسا کو کلیسا سے اٹھا دو کیوں خالق و مخلوق میں حائل رہے پردے دیر شوڈن بی اینی ڈسٹنسز بیٹوین دی کریئیٹر اور دی کریئیٹڈ دی کن کمیونکیٹ ڈائریکٹلی یو کن کمیونکیٹ ویڈ می ویر ایور یو لائک اٹس اونلی یو ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو کمیونکیٹ ویڈ می بیکاز یو آر یو ہیو اے گلٹی کانشنس بیکاز یو نو یو آر ارننگ حرام یو آر ایٹنگ حرام یو ڈونٹ ہیو دی فیس to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have the tongue to talk to him because you know. Everybody knows what he is. He knows what I am. Therefore he wants you know some other ways by hip or crook. You please some peer and you place something on the, on the grave of some big waliullah and then all your wishes will be granted. So that is actually a very cunning way of exploitation that has been given an end by this ayah وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ عُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِ زَادَانِ You need not go anywhere to call me. You need not please anybody to call me, to, to be able to communica- communicate with me. Only whenever you like, but with sincerity. Make a firm resolve. I will respond to Allah's call. Always, I will listen to Him. I will obey Him. I will act according to His commandments. And then talk to him. He will listen to you. He will grant your request. By Zasa la Karibadi Anni Faini Karib, Uji Budavata Dai Zadar, Falyas Taji Buli. The second part of this covenant should be also fulfilled. They also should listen to me, hearken to me, and they also should respond to me, and they also should have real faith in me, La Allahum Yar Shadur, so that they reach the final destination of success. وَهِلَّا لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ الرَّفَصُ إِلَىٰ لِسَائِكُمْ Now this very lengthy ayah, it gives final rules and regulations about the fasting in Islam. Because you know, previously in the former Muslim Ummah, there was no sahri, no eating or drinking after you one said your night prayer, for example after Isha, no eating, nothing of the sort, till the, the next Maghrib, when you know night starts again. So the, the fast covered the night as well as the day. Only for a little time between Maghrib and Isha you could, you could eat and drink and nothing else. Here this now fasting has been reduced to only the daytime, from the dawn to the sunset. So this is another this. Then there was no sexual intercourse also permitted during the fasting. Because the night was also included in the fast, so there could be no sexual intercourse between the husband and the wife. So these things were there in uh, the as practices among the Jews. And the Muslims of Medina, they were seeing that the psalm in the Jews has these additional limitations. So they thought that they are included in Islamic laws also. Although there was no mention of it before in the Quran, either to the contrary or confirming those regulations. But some people thought that it is not lawful, it is not permissible to have sexual intercourse with their wives. But still, they were doing it. So in a way, they were betraying themselves. They were doing khayana with their own selves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it first in this ayah, and then, you know, given the final rules, that this is the difference between the psalm of Islam and the psalm of the Jews of the previous ummah. وَهِلَّا لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصَّيَامِ الرَّفَصُ إِلَىٰ نِسَائِكُمْ it has been made, declared lawful for you to have sexual contact with your wives during the nights of the, of the fasting. The fasting is for the day, not for the night. Hunna libasul lakum antum libasul lahun. They are like a covering because just as the dress. They are like dress to you and you are like dress to them. This, this dress covers our body. So actually the intimacy between the dress and the body, so that has been referred to by this simile, 
They are like, are like dressed to you and you are like the dress to them. Hunna libasullakum wa antum libasullahunna. So this close affinity and proximity. Alim Allahu annakum kuntum takhtaruna anfusakum. It's in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that then you were committing khayana with yourselves. You were betraying yourselves. You thought that this sexual intercourse is contrary to this song and still you were doing it. Only a few much might have been doing it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, mentions it because with reference to that, he is now giving the final rules about the song in Islam. Fataba alaykum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your tawbah. He has relented towards you. He is lenient towards you. Pafarkum. And he has forgiven you. You have done a mistake, committed a mistake. You shouldn't have done this. Although you didn't know, didn't know it for sure that it is haram. But you thought that it is haram and still you are, you are doing it. So actually you are betraying yourself. You are doing khayana, dishonesty with your own self. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has relented towards you and he has accepted your, your tawbah and he has forgiven you. Fal'ana ba'ashiruhunna. Now you can have contact with them. Babtahu ma'katab Allahu lakum. And now you want to, you, you try to get what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. Now this sexual intercourse, the result is offspring, the result is taskeen, litasqanu ilayha. Everything that is contained in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not gone into details. But whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you, in this contact between the spouses, you can get it, you can have it. وَبْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ فَالْآنَ بَاشَرُوهُنَّ وَبْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ And you can keep on eating and drinking till the white thread of the morning of the dawn becomes evident to you from the black thread of the night. This is again, you know, an expression for the dawn when that whiteness appeared on the horizon. It's like a thread which is separating darkness from the from the, this thread, you know, it is separating the horizon. When the white thread of white thread of the dawn becomes evident to you from the black thread of the night. Now when dawn has appeared, stop eating, stop drinking. Now till the setting of sun setting. Till the coming of the night, you have to complete this song. Now all the restrictions are there. No eating, no drinking, no sexual contact, nothing of the sort. All things prohibited. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ An additional limitation. And that is when you are more takif. What is the etikaf? To, con to confine yourself to the limits of a masjid, an area, but not the whole of masjid, where really prayers are held. Because there are additional things, amenities, they are not included in this di in the definition of mos masjid. Masjid is only the place where people really bow and prostrate and where they offer their prayers. So you restrict yourself, cut off from the other worldly, your routine activities, and now you are absolutely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Him, praying Him, reading Quran, doing whatever he has commanded to do. So all these things you can do. But you know, you can't go out of these limits of the mosque, except when there is real need. If you have to call to the, to respond to the call of the nature, you can go to the bathroom, the washroom, that's all. But otherwise, you cannot go out. So when you are motakif in the masajid, vantum akifuna fil masajid, then you cannot have any sexual contact with your wives even during the nights of the storm. These are for the ten days, you know, the Masnoon Etikaf, the last ten days, after the night of the twenty-first begins, you know. This is the beginning of Etikaf, Masnoon Etikaf. Nafal Etikaf, voluntary Etikaf can be for smaller period, can be at any time, during any month, any day. But you know, this Masnoon Etikaf, which was the practice of the Prophet wasallam, it is last ten days of every month of Ramadan. وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ 
دیز آر دی لمیٹیشن لیڈ ڈاؤن بائی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی فلا تقربو ہا ویری بیوٹیفل ڈونٹ گو نیئر دین ایٹ سرٹن پلیسز ان قرآن دیر از لا تعتدو ہا ڈونٹ ٹرانسگریس دی لمیٹس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ٹرانسگریسنگ یو گو آؤٹ فرام دی لمیٹس اٹس سم تھنگ ایلس ڈونٹ گو نیئر دین کیپ ایٹ اے سیف ڈسٹینس If yes, you are, if you are very near to it, then it's just possible that you can just cross it. Maybe unknowingly you have crossed the limits, because you are very near to the final limits. So keep at a safe distance from the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down. Tilka hududullah fala taqrabuha. These are the limitations laid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't go near them. Keep yourself at a safe, safe distance from them. کزالک یبین اللہ آیات ہلاس اللہ تقون ان دس وے اللہ سبحان و تعالی ایکسپلینز ہز آیات آل ہز کمانڈمنٹس آر بینگ ایکسپلینڈ ایوری تھنگ وچ واز ڈاؤٹ فل اباؤٹ دس دس عبادہ دس موڈ آف ورشپ آف سوم ناؤ اٹ ہیز بین کلیئرڈ آل دی تھنگس ہیو بین ایکسپلین کزالک یبین اللہ آیات ہلاس In this manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes His commands, His ayat clear for the people. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that they can be saved. They don't transgress the laws. They don't transgress the, the hudud of Allah, the limitations of Allah unknowingly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything clear and plain. وَلَا تَعْقُلُوا وَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاقِلِ And don't eat up one another's, one another's property. And wealth, bil batil, on through false methods, illegal methods, unlawful methods, this can be in many ways stealing. You have stolen some property of somebody else. It is illegal. If he gives you himself in gift, you can take it. You can use it. If he has gifted it to you, if he has given you some present, you can take it. You can use it. But if you have stolen it, then it is haram for you, it is impermissible, it is, it is not uh, lawful for you to use it. Stealing, in the same way, now a particular case is being given here. But tudlu biha ilal hukkam, la taakulu amwalakum baylakum bilbaati. Don't eat up one another's property and wealth through illegal means, through illegal methods. And don't... Present your property and your wealth to the rulers. Leta kulu farika min amwal indas with the intention that you eat up some part of the people's property will ism with sin unjustly. Wal tum talamun and you do it knowingly. This is the rishwa. This is you know with what that you present to the people bribery. You present your money to the judge or to the authority, someone who can do some favor to you. Whatever favor he is doing to you, if he is a government official, it is at the cost of the interest of the government. And if there is some dispute, some case in the, in the court of a judge, and you have pleased that judge through bribery, well, he will do you favor and he will do wrong to the other party. So you are eating the property and the wealth of the other party by giving your wealth to the judge, to the authority, to the person who is sitting in judgment on that matter. So don't do it. This is called bribery. And actually the hadith, Ar-Rashi wal-Murtashi kilahuma fin nar. Rashi means the person who gives bribe. Generally we think that Rashi is the person who is accepting bribe and who is eating bribe. On the contrary, in Arabic language, the Rashi is the person who is giving bribe and Murtashi is the person who is accepting bribe. So Rashi is more important. The Prophet ﷺ has first mentioned Rashi, the person who is, who is presenting and who is offering bribe, he is Rashi. And here in the Quran also we are finding that the mention is make, being made of the people who are giving bribe. Now, Tudlu biha ilal hukkam. Don't give your mal, your property, your wealth to the rulers in order that you may eat up and you may usurp the property or wealth of other people will ism unjustly and antum talamun and you might be knowing it, willfully doing it, then it is haram for you. 
Now what is the logical relationship of this ayah with this section? This section started with taqwa. Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala lazina min kablikum laallakum tattakoon. What is the criterion for taqwa? The criterion for taqwa is if you are eating halal, you are muttaqi. If you are eating haram, you are not muttaqi. You may be very pious apparently. You may, you may be worshipping, you know, not five prayers a day, but ten prayers a day. But if you are eating haram, you are not at all muttaqi. The real criterion of taqwa is that you must eat and you must earn through halal means and not through haram means. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim.